dairy. Okay, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the RDH code. So we finally finished setting up our development environment. Now it's also really important that you understand the files and folders present in the generated project and how to control the flows when you run the application. Let's take a look at that in this video. I have opened the RDH code project in VS Code. And you can see that at the root level we have 4 folders and 5 files to begin with. Let's start with the important bits in package.json. This file contains the dependencies and the scripts required for the project. You can see that we are using Svelte version 3 and that is listed as a dev dependency. Svelte is only used during the compilation phase and never bundled into the code that is sent to the browser. We then have rollup which is a model bundler and a whole lot of roller plugins listed as dev dependencies. Rollup is responsible for transforming the Svelte code we write into JavaScript code that the browsers can understand. There is one dependency which is the server CLI. It allows us to run a static file server. We also have three scripts dev for development built to create a production ready version of the application and start for serve CLI to serve the built application straightforward to package.json. As you can see, Next we have the configuration file for rollup, rollup.config.js. This is the config file that is used when we run the command yarn dev or yarn build. If you are interested in the various configuration, I recommend you to take a look at rollup documentation. Next we have the yarn log file. Based on whether you prefer npm or yarn as a package manager, you are going to see yarn log or package log file. They simply ensure consistent installations of your dependencies and you don't have to really worry about them. We also have git ignore and readme file. Alright, next let's talk about the folders. The first one is node modules. This is the folder in which all the dependencies are installed. It is generated when you run the yarn command or npm install command. The next folder is the public folder. This folder contains static assets that are published when you want to go live with your application. It contains three files. We have a fab icon which you see in the browser tab and is nothing Svelte specific. We also have a global CSS file which includes styles that are applied to our entire application. And finally, we have an index.html file which is the only HTML file you are going to have in your application. We are building single page application right now and this is it. The view might dynamically change in the browser. But it is this HTML file that gets served up. Typically you are not going to add any code in this file. Maybe some changes in the head but definitely not in the body tag. You want swell to control the UI. And for that purpose we have CSS and JS file. So slash build slash bundle.css slash build slash bundle.js. These files are from the build folder which get generated when you run or build your application. Now please make a note of this empty body tag as we will come back to it shortly. The next folder is the scripts folder which contains a file pertaining to TypeScript setup. Since we are going to learn Svelte with just JavaScript, we don't have to worry about this for now. The next folder is the source folder which is the folder we will be working with the most during our development. The starting point for our Svelte application is main.js. In main.js we import the root components which is app component and invoke it as a function specifying the document body as the target element. And if you can recollect we have an empty body element in our ntext.html file. So everything inside this body tag will be managed by Swell. For the application, the app component is rendered inside the body element. That brings us to the app component which is present in app.swell. Now the .swell file extension I bet is something new to you if you are learning about Swell for the first time. We will talk about this .swell files in the next video. But for now let me tell you that it is a file where you specify the HTML, CSS and JavaScript corresponding to a portion of the UI you see in the browser. You can see here we have a script block with a variable called name. For the HTML we have the main HTML tag with an h1 tag and a paragraph tag. This is the text we see in the browser below the HTML. We also have some styles specified within our style block. The app.swell file pretty much represents the UI you see in the browser. So that is the folder structure of Svelte application created using the dgit command. Next, let's understand the control flow when you run this application in the terminal. When you run the command yarn dev, index.html file is served in the browser. Index.html contains a reference to bundle.js. The bundle.js is your main.js file compiled to a JavaScript format that the browser can understand. The Svelte code renders itself within the body tag. So if I inspect the heading element, you can see the main tag as a child of the body tag. This is nothing but our app component and the name of course is a name from main.js which gets replaced in the HTML because of the Svelte compiler. So hello name replace name with world which is the hello world and that is what you see in the browser. We will of course learn more about this Svelte magic in the next videos. So this is pretty much all about the project structure for now, the control flow from package.json, 
dev script to index.html, bundle.js script to main.js, and finally app.svelte. Now I'm pretty sure this file extension which is .svelte is new to you. So let's discuss more about that in the next video.